Shaders are powerful visuals you can use, not only to make your game look better, but add powerful visual effects. You do not actually need to know how to make shaders to get them in your game though. You can find lots of free GoDaddy shaders on the internet. GoDaddyShaders.com is probably the best place to find shaders. GoDaddy Shaders is a website where users who made shaders themselves upload the shader, allowing you to use their shader within your own game environment. But that's enough about getting shaders, let's now talk about making shaders. There are two methods of making shaders, visual shaders, which is similar to visual scripting or similar to making shaders in Blender. The second method is coded shaders. However, in this video I am going to be talking about coded shaders. There are also many different types of shaders. There's canvas shader for 2D things, there's spatial shader for 3D things, there are sky shaders, volumetric fog shaders, and more. The language that is used to make these shaders is called GD shader, and its syntax is just like C sharp or Java's. There may be many different types of shaders, but they are all very similar since they use the same language. In this video, we'll be learning shader basics with spatial shaders or 3D shaders. Let's start with how to add a shader. In a mesh, add a new shader material, and in the shader, add a new shader. There are two main functions that are run in shaders, void vertex and void fragment. These functions both run automatically similarly to funk ready or funk process in GD script. Basically, funk fragment loops through every pixel, and funk vertex loops through every vertex in the mesh. Shaders have something called shader parameters. Shader parameters are just like how in your script when you write, at export var something equals something. The variable will show up in the inspector, and you can even change its value. When you change its value in the inspector, it doesn't change the value in code. The value set in code is the default value, and when you reset the value in the inspector, the default will be restored. Shader parameters are just like this. They show up in the inspector, and you can change their values. To create a shader parameter, you just create a variable with the keyword uniform at the front. In GD Shader, you cannot have global non-constant variables, you can only have global constant variables and uniform variables. In shaders, it is very important to be able to pass in images. So how do you do that? You need to create a shader parameter of type sampler 2D. Sampler 2D is basically a 2D image. And if you look in shader parameters, you can see it wants an image. You can give it an image you have in your GoDaddy file system. Another useful thing you can set is a noise texture for the image. To do that, click the empty bar on the image parameter, then at the bottom of your options, you will find Noise Texture 2D. Once you add it, click on the noise texture you added, and at the bottom you see an empty bar called Noise. Click New Fast Noise Light, and you have a noise texture. Play around with the noise texture settings to get something you like. I highly recommend enabling Seamless and putting Seamless Blend Skirt to the max value, or else the texture will not be seamless and look like this. To your noise texture, you can give it a color by going to the color ramp and adding a new gradient. When I change the colors, you can see that in the preview image, the color is changing. Now that we have our chosen image set in the shader parameter, you need to convert it into a vector 3 so you can set it as the albedo. The albedo is a vector 3, as it has three values, red, green, and blue. To make our image into a vector 3, in void fragment, you need to create a new VEC3. Then you need to use the texture function to convert your sampler 2D, or image, into a vector 3. The first argument in texture is your sampler 2D. The second is the UV. UV is basically a map that says what parts of the texture should be projected on what faces. But don't worry much about that definition. Just think of UV as the scale of your texture. You can multiply the value of UV in void vertex by writing UV times equals a number I usually create a uniform float called UV scale, and at the top of void vertex right, UV times equal UV scale. Now back to our texture, you can see it's giving an error still. The reason is because the texture function returns a vector 4, not a vector 3. Fixing it is as simple as putting a .rgb at the end of the line. Now you can just set albedo to texture by writing this line, and you can see our mesh has the texture on it. Now is a good time to show what happens when you change the value of UV scale. This is kind of boring though, the same thing can be achieved with a normal material. Let's make the texture move. Go back to texture, and in the argument where you pass UV, plus UV by time. Time is basically a value that is constantly increasing. If you just add a number to UV, you can see that the texture gets offset. Since time is constantly increasing, when you add it to UV, the texture is constantly being offset, which results in a moving texture. 
you can decrease the speed by dividing time by a number. Similarly to how there is albedo, there is also metallic, roughness, alpha, normal, and other stuff. You can do the same thing with them as you did with albedo, where you get a texture and set it to another one of the material properties. A very commonly used function that is used in shaders is mix. Let's say you have two vector 3 textures. As you can see, I use the same image for both the textures, but one is added by time, and the second is subtracted by time. I'm going to create a new vector 3 called mixed and set it to be equal to the mix function. The mix function returns a vector 3, and it needs three arguments. The first two arguments are the textures, and the third argument is the mix ratio. If I set the mix ratio to 0, then it only shows the first texture. If I set the mix ratio to 1, then it only shows the second texture. If I set it to 0.75, then it mainly shows the second texture. But if you look closely, you can see the third texture is being shown a bit as well. If you set it to 0.5, then both textures are being mixed and form this crazy effect. Let me change the speed. And now we've got a pretty fancy shader. You can even set a VEC3 or an image to the mix ratio argument. So at some places, texture 1 is more visible. And at other places, texture 2 is more visible. Let me initialize another uniform sampler 2D called Miesk and give it a simple noise texture. I'm going to also initialize a third uniform sampler 2D, then set the second texture to be the third sampler 2D. Now you can see how the images are being mixed together based on the Miask image. If I change the properties of the Miask image's texture, you can see the mix ratio changing as well. Now let's talk about void vertex, which loops through each vertex on your mesh. You can set each vertex's position to a certain value by just doing vertex.x equals a number, and you can see every vertex's x position is set to the number you specify. If you set the vertex to time, the mesh is reduced to atoms, so let's put time inside, and as you can see the mesh is oscillating back and forth. All the vertexes are in the same coordinate though, so just make it plus equal to sign a time. Let's make a cool wavy effect. Our cube doesn't have enough vertexes for that, so just subdivide it. Be careful not to subdivide it too much, or it will have too many vertexes and your computer will explode. Add the X vertex to time, or Z vertex depending on the direction you want the waviness to be in. The wave effect isn't very apparent, so multiply the value of vertex.x, and now we have a funny wavy cube. Now add vertex.z to it, and this is our result. In this video, I ran through the basics of shaders in GoDaddy. Of course, there is much more to learn when it comes to shaders. This video was just the very basics you need to know to actually make shaders. A great way to learn more about shaders is to make a normal material, modify it, then convert to a shader material, and read the code. Shaders may seem daunting, but with practice and creativity, you can turn your game into a work of art. Keep experimenting, keep pushing boundaries, and most importantly, have fun on your shader making adventure. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you found the video helpful, and until next time, keep making GoDaddy games!